Here's a quick video that should make your trip to Vail a little bit more enjoyable. In the late 1950s, World War II elite ski trooper Pete Seibert set out to create the most beautiful ski resort in the world. So he hiked all through the Rockies looking for the ideal location. Unlike Aspen, Breckenridge, and Steamboat Springs, which were 19th century mining towns, Vail was created for the sole purpose of skiing. And after Pete found a peak in a good location, ideal for skiing with great snow, he called it No Name Peak, bought a ranch at the base, gathered investors from Denver, and the rest is history. In 1962, Vail was open for business. You can get there in a car, of course, but for most folks, it's a long haul. So if you're flying, there are two airports to choose from. Denver International, which leaves you a scenic two and a half hour drive, or Eagle County Regional, which leaves you about a 30 minute drive. In general, flights to Denver are a bit less expensive and have more options on arrival and departure times. If you don't take one of the shuttles, you're gonna need to rent a car. Now, four wheel drive isn't an absolute must, but if you end up needing it, you'll be very glad you got it. If you're driving from Denver, the last big stop for supplies is Frisco. There's a Walmart, Whole Foods, ski shops, dispensaries. You can pick up pretty much anything you forgot right there in Frisco. All right, you're in Vail, you gotta stay somewhere. And when you start looking for places to stay, you realize something. Vail is expensive. Now, all skiing's expensive, but Vail's the most expensive. And that's good news if you're rich, famous, or rich and famous, and you don't want to ski with a bunch of peasants. But it's bad news if you're a peasant and you want to ski Vail. If you're running a leaner budget, you can check VRBO for houses on the other side of the interstate or some of the other hotels. But if budget isn't a concern, there's places like the Airbell or Plaza Lodge, plush spots just steps from the main gondolas. But we skied with kids and wanted to be close to the lift, so we stayed at Antlers. Sort of a middle of the road place, one and a half bedroom, one bath, with a nice view of the mountain. For five nights, it was a little over three grand. So you made it, you checked in, it's time to look around. Vail's a small town. It's got a couple grocery stores, the McDonald's, the normal stuff you'd expect to see. And the ski resort is a large rambling mass of condos, shops, restaurants, and ski rental places. The resort has two main centers the original Vail Village and Lion's Head, which was added as the resort grew. The Lion's Head side has an ice skating rink and has some kid-friendly activities. It would take several trips to Vail to really get a complete grip on the layout of the place and to try all the restaurants. If you're off-site and you plan to drive in, there's parking at both Vail Village and Lion's Head for about 25 bucks a day. It's finally time to ski, and skiing is what makes Vail great. There's over 5,000 skiable acres, which makes it the largest spot in Colorado, and the fourth largest in North America, behind Whistler, Park City, and Big Sky. There's tons of runs, lots of wide lanes, and huge variety. So there's two main areas, the front side and the back bowls. The front side has tons of runs with plenty of beginner stuff. Depending on where you stay, you hop on either Gondola 1 at Vail Village or Eagle Bond at Lion's Head and make your way to the top. And there's restaurants and shops at the top of all three peaks, but you better bring some money. We got two hot chocolates, an apple cider, a brownie, and a pack of Skittles. That'll be $45. But once you're at the top, you can ski down to any point at the base of the mountain. The back bowls are mostly blues and blacks and for a slightly more advanced skier. Overall, you can't go wrong with a trip to Vail. The only potential negative is that it tends to be pricey, but if you start early and plan ahead, you can still ski Vail without breaking the bank. Please feel free to share your experiences at Vail in the comments and any tips and other recommendations you might have to make it a better trip for someone. You can also check here for the rest of the Vail ski trip. <laughs>